<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Twit Snuffers. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful and beautiful co-host, Prince Ty. <laughs> Good evening. Ty's actually not the normal co-host. I just, uh, get, I just threw him the title tonight. He has a promotion for the next 20 minutes or however long this lasts. Fantastic. Also joining him tonight is the always amazing Stephen Lehman. Thanks. And the very insightful Alex Cash. Hey. All right, guys, we have a whole, whole bunch to cover with. It was a fantastic episode of Survivor. Um, I don't think it was as amazing as some people think it was, i.e. Steven, because I thought they uh, – they we knew who was going home very early on. But before we actually talk about Lucy and all the drama of the Gen Xers, I think we should actually take this episode and just only talk about the millennials and hash out all their stuff before we even go into Gen X's, because that's going to be a giant clusterfuck, and Ty's going to wind up calling someone stupid, one of us, and it's going to be really fantastic. All right, so Alex, me and you are going to talk right now, okay? Are you ready? So, what do you make of the fact that uh, Adam not only got the hidden immunity idol, but they're hiding the immunity idols in shells and coconuts now? Do you like that as a device, and what do you make of Adam with that? Do you actually think he'll be able to leverage it correctly? Well, the thing is, is that we haven't seen that much of Adam besides him being in episode one. He was the least millennial out of all of the millennials. And in episode two, he was the overconfident uh, pre blindside. So beyond that, we haven't really seen that much of, you know, what he's capable of. So I have no idea if he's going to be able to leverage it properly as for the as for the hiding it in places. I, I would love for that to be the case, but I think there are a couple of tweaks that I would like to make. Right. One being that you would have to find the clue first, and yeah. and two, that they don't spray paint a giant orange or purple emblem on the <laughs> side of the thing, so that, that means that you actually have to use the clue to figure out. Okay, so it would be like a smaller little emblem where you would like, or you'd pick it up and see it underneath something like that. Yeah. Okay. I actually, I kind of like this suggestion, Ty. And I know you want to talk about Adam. That's why I sent it to Alex first because you're about to call him stupid. Because Ty, you love Adam. Go ahead. I'm not going to call him stupid. I'm going to say that Alex Cash is absolutely incorrect if he thinks we didn't see anything from Adam last week. Because one of the few things we saw okay. from the millennials last week was Adam talking to Michaela and getting the ball rolling on turning on Figgy the next time that they went, basically digging himself out, offering great arguments that Michaela absolutely positively was buying into basically saying, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I do know that I don't like Figgy and that Adam makes a lot of sense. So to that end, Adam shows that he's not given up. Adam just got the amazing edit where he talked about his dying mother. Adam is going to be fine. Adam's about to make the swap with an idol. Adam's golden. He's wonderful. He's my winner pick. And Alex has <laughs> pointed out that he forgot about uh, Adam's little edit there. So, Ty, do you think Adam would be in the kind of position, or do you think he's the kind of player that would turn on the Millennials post-swap, or do you think he's going to try to stay loyal to at least some of the people on there? He's not going to be like a David, right, and just immediately try to stab everyone in the back? I think it all depends on who he's with. I think he's loyal to Zeke, and outside of that, I think it's all circumstantial. I think he has a good connection with Michaela where they talk, and that he could do something with her. It really all depends. Let's put it this way. If it's him and the couple, the couple is dead. The couple is absolutely positively dead. He will gut them like fish. But, you know, it all depends. It's, it's all circumstantial. We don't know yet because we don't know who he's going to end up with. But we know that he's a smart enough player to weigh the situation properly. And that's very fair. And that's something, Stephen, we should just talk, uh, kind of address right now is the fact that because there's a swap next episode, us being like, oh, I wonder who's going to – there's not really much point because it's all going to be irrelevant. Oh, David made good um, – Mm-hmm. Point or right, David made good alliances. Oh, next week he swapped with four millennials well, that don't like him. You know he's done. Okay, go mm-hmm. ahead, Stephen. Well, I was gonna say with David. Now that you brought that up, mm-hmm. we did have this scene where he sort of solidified that little pact with Taylor. Yeah. Like when I'm with you, my old tribe is dead to me, sort of thing. So, and that's part of the reason why I think his move tonight was stupid. But we are focusing well, on millennials right now. I was gonna say, um, yeah. and I think Ooh. that. Go ahead. Um, I think that with the millennials and the dynamics being fleshed out, I think some of them still can have long-term consequences. It may just not be with all the same people. So, for example, Taylor and Figgy being a pair will still piss people off. Um, you know, Adam and Zeke will may still be sort of duos with me. I mean, I, I think a lot of the storylines for millennials are still there. They may just not be sort of immediate storylines. 
and I'm gonna anyone else can comment on this. I'm kind of seeing a picture of post swap. We're ha having an instance of where you have millennials like Zeke and Adam and maybe even Hannah hiding behind some of the more aggressive millennials. And on the same, we'd have the same thing with the Gen Xers where we have David hiding behind like a Chris and a Brett. So maybe this next four episodes is just going to be a slaughter of all the big people. Does anyone want to comment on that? I think that's entirely possible. I, mm -hmm. I basically see this swap being who is going to be most adaptable. I honestly see the couple getting split up. I see Figgy ending up with Michaela because that storyline is going to have payoff at some mm -hmm. point. You know, um, I could see somebody like Chris, you know, not to talk too much about the Gen Xers yet, yeah. but I could see somebody like Chris being absolutely positively screwed because he's the giant Hulk out there who was a big threat to everybody, was completely dominating that challenge, and quite frankly, is kind of a curmudgeon. He looked good the first episode, and since then, he's been bitchy a yeah. lot. And yeah, and, to that and, end, I could easily get him screwed, much like the giant whose name I'm forgetting who dragged Chet during uh, fans' Joel. Joel. favorites. Joel, indeed. And that's, and that's a similar situation. That's the thing is, I don't think both Chris and Brett make merge. I think one of them will, but definitely there doesn't seem to be the edit to do that. But in Chris's defense, though, we are giving confessionals of him bitching, but he was blindsided so by the Paul version. So I, I, I give him a little bit of you know leverage with right. that. All right, He's getting so, confessionals at least. So that's true. Now yeah, speaking of getting toss fire in, uh, toss rice in the ocean confessionals. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's something. Best. But someone else got a lot of confessionals today, and Stephen, that was Michaela. So with Ty's analysis, do you think Michaela's storyline is going to bubble in with Figgy, or, or kind of? Because I'm trying to think of what millennials I think I actually have these long overarching storylines. So, so I think Michaela has an immediate storyline right now of her, I guess, conflict, if you want to call it that, with Figgy, um, which isn't to say she doesn't have long-term storylines, but I think that's just where her edit is at right now. I think, obviously, it's possible she could branch out and mm. have other stuff happen, but I think what we have right now with Michaela in front of us in terms of storyline is, well, we have two storylines. One, her being this, like, boss bitch and challenges, mm. Um, and the second, of course, being her mini feud with Figgy. Um, so I definitely think it's possible for her to have branching out storylines. I just don't think they... You still think um, we're there yet? Yeah, I don't think we're there yet, essentially. So, but the thing is, we are leaving out arguably the most important millennial, and this person has had the most amount of storylines, the greatest edits, the best persona, which is Hannah. Like, Hannah is clearly set up to win this game, right, guys? <laughs> hey, buddy. How's yeah. the idol start going? Yeah. Okay. Ty. Good Ty. Luck. Uh, was that dumb of her to say, hey, buddy, how the hours are Was she actually trying to blow him spot, or was she just being awkward and nerdy? Because I'm leaning more towards awkward and nerdy and not a great strategist as much as I am. You know, I am too, and I don't – I mean, one would think that if she realized that Adam wanted nothing to do with her, that she would have gone back to camp and we would have seen a scene where camp knew that he had the idol. Right. And camp did not see that, which basically makes me think that she's – an idiot. And I think she's an idiot based on how the Mari tribal council went, where she was just like, well, why am I voting this person out? And that like completely awkward, painful conversation that happened. I'm thinking she's just kind of out there. Until she wins. <laughs> sure. That's a thing that'll happen. Until she, until she screams, use me, well, in the state of North Carolina, while Colin is present. Anyways. Yes. yes. But the only thing I can think of is that she legitimately didn't see the idol and was just, yeah. you know, giving him a hard time and razzing oh, his berries awesome. as the kid. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that she didn't actually see it. All right. So we've talked about Adam. We talked about Hannah. We talked about Michaela. Zeke um, seems to be getting a bit of a dark horse edit. But, Ty, before we talk about Zeke, I actually want to talk, talk about Taylor because <laughs> he seems to be getting a – pretty good at it despite the dodo-ness that's surrounding him yeah. him and jay they're not getting the hard, i mean they're not getting as bad of edits as chris and brett is there anything to them getting a maturing edit like oh they started off so weak and they became so strong and they became good players uh, it's possible i mean i think he ends up with david because otherwise why do they bother showing that and i can see david like kind of like teaching the dumb man how to like play the game after his girlfriend gets voted out. Basically, that's what I see. I mean, I don't know. I haven't, you know, obviously I haven't seen spoilers. I'm shooting from yeah. the hip. I can see Taylor's maturation coming in an episode or two after the swap where all of a sudden 
the girl's gone. What do yeah. I do? And like, you know, other, you know, I can't sound like a surfer because I'm just too jaded inside. But, yeah. you know, basically like that basically being the personal growth of his game. Yeah. And and that's and like, the thing. I, I just... him. And him kind of falling in with like Ken and David and all that sort of business. I can and see that's the thing is, that's, that's what I wanted to point out was that they seem to be getting yeah. a little bit more to meet guys, especially uh, Taylor. However, Alex J, I think, mm -hmm. could get slain in the next two episodes from a swap. I think, you know, a Chris Brett or even a Jessica uh, Sunday thing could be like, oh, this kid, he's too good. Let's get him out. What do you think? Or am I just reading too much into this? Am I just projecting onto it? Well, the thing is, is that. Uh, you're like if they get rid of him because he's a threat that that's not just your opinion uh, There was like there was a secret scene where Zeke said that he wanted to work with Jay going forward Just because Jay's the best best player and therefore has the best chance at you know rescuing his game from you know the tattered position it's in right now mm -hmm. so people do think of Jay as you know a good player and as a threat so and that's interesting because we're not actually seeing that that much in the edit. Try force to go. Okay, but what's interesting is we're not actually seeing that in the direct edit though. We're only right. seeing him as kind of a blah blah blah. So that's very interesting that he might get a oh he was just a strong hot guy and he had to leave boot episode when in reality he was actually a pretty decent player. All right, so we are going to talk just very briefly about the challenges. Um, real quick, raise your hand if you loved them both today. Yeah, and I guess the only kind of conundrum I have is, Stephen, do you think they should attempt to balance them a little bit more when the tribes are so, like, unevenly matched in terms of strength? But then again, though, we could say the Millennials had the advantage in the other challenge where you had to get through that small little hole. Yeah, so, exactly. Like, I, mean, I think these challenges are about as even as they – uh, as they can be given the disparity and all things considered it's not like a nicaragua age divide where it's you know uh 30 and under versus 40 and over versus 90 year old people yeah right you know what, we have the old, yeah. the old person is 53 which by all accounts isn't old yeah. um you know so i i wouldn't say that like the age disparity or the unbalance between tribes had much of an impact because gen x has some pretty ripped people too i mean and that's fair. Well, I would say especially – well, I was thinking more of that first challenge where Brett and Chris were doing a pretty good job of just plowing everyone, mainly Chris. But Millennials actually almost won that one, so maybe I'm reading too much. The only thing is, Ty, I do get a little concerned because it reminds me of that challenge in uh, – they use in Survivor Heroes versus Villains where they toss the uh, coconuts mm -hmm. across the thing and right. James got injured. I am – there's a little part of me when I see these really physical challenges that I'm like, oh, God, this could be really awful. And we might get a meta back. Shit happens. Shit. I think they're fun. I mean, let's do it this way. I'm not, I'm not like a huge purist when it comes to like caring that much about the challenges. There are challenges that I like. There are challenges I don't like. I'm not like. My thing is always the strategy, and like that's the thing that keeps me coming back. That being said, it's fun to see them duke it out. It's really fun, you know, to see who's going to lose their top. How are they going to react to losing their top? Are they going to lose their damn mind? Are they going to double finger it up like sugar? I mean, you know, you, you ever know how it's going to work. Yeah, out? I mean, there, there is Michaela a got there, her interesting yeah. quit because of it. So, and that's true because I would actually there is a spectrum of losing tops. There's a sugar giving the fingers, and then there's Amanda. My mom's going to kill me. So, yeah. and Michaela is much closer to the sugar and the top Absolutely. losing company. And see, people say, Colin, what are you doing with your life? I have a distinct knowledge of when survivor women lose their tops. Bam, <laughs> that's something. All right, we've got how does Hannah react? How to handle exactly? We've gotten all this stuff out of the way. Let's just push it out, and now let's only focus on the big meat of tonight's episode, which was Gen X's, and what I argue was actually some pretty shitty gameplay, just from every corner. The first person we're going to talk about, though, is mm -hmm. the wonderful Barbie boy Ken. Steven. Yeah. What do you make of Ken tonight? Because he was getting these really fantastic edits, and then tonight I, happens. I, I, and he vote, he still voted for Jessica. I want to point that out. Yeah, no, I was gonna say that. Um, I actually don't think they could have been a lot harder on him if they wanted to. I mean, the way we were shown, at least with the Lucy confrontation, was Lucy's talking down to a grown ass man, and in the words of Rory Freeman from Vanuatu, "I'm a grown ass man. I don't take orders well." Um, I wanted to drop a Rory reference for one, but second, uh, um, uh, I I do think that um, you know I. I, I think with Ken, I still think he's getting a pretty good at it. I think... But that was a dumb he, move. 
That was like, a dumb move. Really? I don't. I don't think it was because. So let's say theoretically. Okay. Let's play this out. Say they vote out Jessica. It's still four against three. When you put when you when you tell Jessica, hey, their asses are trying to vote your ass out. Mm-hmm. You can try to but pull something. Wouldn't that be the smarter time of when to flip the script on Lucy then after you've already proven she has some power? Yes, but then the thing is that group of four has already demonstrated themselves to be pretty solid. Which means you're sort of fucked after that. But it would so, still be CC that goes next. And the thing is, though, I just don't like all these players. I guess my thing is I'm not liking all these players. And I'm going to get you, Ty. Isolating people because I feel like David isolated Brett and CC and uh, Chris tonight when, mm-hmm. you know, a swap could screw them by throwing that idol. And then last episode, you had Sunday. the girl. Oh, uh, Sunday, yeah. And then you had uh, last episode, Jessica. Uh, fucking over all those other people. It just seems to me like it's very sloppy to leave this many people pissed off at you. Go ahead, Ty. Um, well, are we focusing on Ken right now? Or are we yeah, focusing, focusing on Ken, yeah, but I was explaining. Focus- right, yeah. because we'll get to all that stuff and I yeah, picked yeah. all that down. I don't think Ken had a bad episode. The simple yeah. truth of the matter is that Lucy was invisible and all of a sudden we see her barking at shit. And we know that Ken doesn't play that and we like Ken and like feel good about the fact that Ken doesn't take bullshit. And the simple truth of the matter is that Ken, throughout, has trusted Jessica, has talked to Jessica. They have had a good rapport. If anybody looks stupid tonight, it was Jessica, and she's lucky that she got her ass saved. Because Ken basically said, they're trying to kill you, we can stop it. And Jessica was like, oh no, Ken, don't be silly. I'm perfectly fine. And then she wasn't perfectly fine. Ken said, okay, screw it. I'm not going to get my cell phone out takes the gift horse because Lucy's too stupid to flip it on to him, mm-hmm. and basically he says, okay, we're voting for Jessica, and then you know what? It, 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 but doesn't... It's that bad in all of this. Yeah. And you know, that's a pretty good, pretty good point. I guess my thing was, I'm just really surprised that Ken, who had been getting this such a good edit, misread Jessica so bad and not being able to figure I, out, hey, she's I, closer to Lucy, and she has to... I, real quick, I wouldn't count it as a misread. I think, oh. if anything, it's more of a Jessica misfire. Yes, um, Jessica screwed that up. Yeah, Ken, Ken but, made no problem. Ken was correct in going to Jessica because when Lucy says, hey, we're going to vote out Jessica, naturally, when you have an eight-person tribe and you're in a group of three, you want to pull that person in so it's 4-4. Four, four. But what I guess what I'm saying is why didn't Ken figure out that, hey, Jessica's not 100% on my team right now? Because, I mean, and remember, keep in mind... logic indicates think, that you're on yeah, the team trying to see Yeah, it. logic dictates that if you're the four, the fifth in a group of five, you want to jump to a group of four. Jessica, much as I love her, mm. did not see it that way. Well, that seems maybe... Well, just, I think, go ahead, Alex. I, I, I think there's two different ways of thinking about this. There's, there's thinking of yourself as the fifth in a group of five, and then there's thinking about yourself as one of the majority right before a swap. And I think that may have been the the misconnection there because Ken is thinking, I need to save my group of people so that I have somebody to work with that isn't just the millennials going forward Mm -hmm. because I have no chance with this tribe, but I can at least have some chance. Uh, And so he's thinking that, you know, I'm not going to, you know, try to turn all of the majority against each other and just play like it, just play stupid like that i'm gonna pick one battle and it's gonna be the most realistic one i have and jessica is thinking i just want to get to the like i just want to have numbers going into the swap and this would threaten my numbers i guess this what i'm surprised about was ken's not being able to figure out that jessica liked lucy more than him i logically y'all are correct in that he made the right moves i'm just surprised that ken didn't have that okay from what we saw it was Jessica who pulled them over. So it's not like, um, so from, I guess from what we saw, Ken was the one who pulled but Jessica. My, my direct issue, Stephen, is not the minutia. It's literally Ken said something to Jessica that he didn't want to tell to Lucy. Ken should have been smart enough to be able to be like, hey, Jessica isn't going to say that to Lucy. And that's why. why? That, that's why my one that I mean, go ahead. You know, let's put it this way. I mean, I, in the org world, I'm like a super strategist and all that sort of business. Okay. You have to tell somebody if they're yeah. in danger and you want to keep them. Yeah. You just have yeah. to do it. You sometimes have to make moves mm-hmm. to do it. And the simple truth of the matter is that we know that he valued Jessica and he was trying to build his value ship with Jessica. And guess what? He's done it because Jessica yeah. was about gone 
he acquiesced to it because yeah. she bit his hand. But ultimately, I think Ken is second best compared to David in yeah. terms of all of this. What we really need to talk about, and I hope we should jump to it yeah. soon, is how fucking stupid Lucy was. Because oh, we're going to get to that in a second because Lucy ruined okay. her own game. I do want to point yes. out, if Jessica figures out that Ken voted for her, that could cause some friction. But with the swap no, next week, what well, I say? With yeah. the swap next week, though, and all the other stuff, I think they could. Okay. And actually, let's let's talk about the uh, – I think she said she was a, a tiger. Let's talk about the tiger in the tiger room. Mom. Alex, we're gonna, tiger, tiger mom. Tiger mom. All right, Alex, let's talk about Lucy. First off, Steven, you said you liked this episode. I don't like it because the moment <laughs> Lucy talked, we knew she was doomed. That was sloppy what? editing. You can try to defend it, Alex, no, or no, you no. can. Hold okay, on, what I will say is, is that, yes, it was, yes, it was sloppy editing, but the, but the thing is, is that, and this is just my personal preference as a, as a survivor viewer, is that if if something like I prefer uh, to have an an expected outcome happen in an unexpected way rather than a completely unexpected outcome because an unexpected okay. outcome doesn't have any pre precedence in the editing or, you know, sometimes it does, but you have to look really hard for it. That's yeah. the best case scenario. But I would rather, uh, I, I would rather be blindsided by the way that something happens rather than that, that it happened in the first place. And so I, so I started this episode thinking Lucy is absolutely going home. And I went to tribal council thinking there is no possible way that she is going home. And then it happened, and I squeed. See, and that's the thing is I just – the moment she talked, I was just telling myself she went home, and I was just assuming they were just doing that fake build-up for the last, like, two minutes of David's confessionals, and it was going to be, like, a five to four Lucy vote. Uh, but that's a very fair point, and I wanted to point out that is kind of like the difference between Lucy going home in this season and then Jeremy going home in San Juan del Sur, where the producers were like – or the other's like, such an amazing blindside you won't see coming. Yeah, because you gave us literally no fucking context for it. You gave us one conversation for it two minutes into the episode, then it went away for forever. But, Ty, what do you think? Why do you think Lucy was so bad at this game, for lack of a better word? I have no idea. Yeah, like, I have no idea why she was on the warpath with Jessica in the first place. Yeah. That made no sense, because Jessica basically trusted her to make this big move, yeah. and she had Jessica to hide behind, which is what you want to do in that situation. You want to hide behind the person who made the big move so early on in the game so that you don't stick out. And basically, she was just like, Tiger Mom, girl, I want to stick out now. The tiger that she reminds me of are the Detroit Tigers, because they're so close to Flint, and she yeah. was drinking some sort of wacky concoction of H2O so, out so there clearly that made her mind melt. Okay, so we just don't know. Is, is that going to be the consensus all around? Steven, do you have an idea? Why did... Because she went from playing a kind of quiet, subtle game to just this madness. Or maybe there was remnants of the crazy game, and Alex will talk about that if he has secret I, scenes about it, but what the fuck? <laughs> I, I think Lucy tried to put her hand in too many jars in the sense that she tried to solidify herself with the guys by saying... I have Dave and Ken with me. And then saying, by the way, let's flip it on Jessica. And then telling Ken and David, we're voting Jessica, but you're not allowed to talk to any of these people. Um, mm -hmm. I think Lucy just blew herself up inadvertently. And, you know, it, it, it's sad, it kind of. Well, are we, are we always going to say it's Alex? Do you have any other insight you want to put on Lucy? Because uh, it's I have one scene, and, and okay. that is that – uh, when talking about the vote last week, she was she was saying that, you know, I have a group of six to go against David, and I have a group of six to go against Paul, so I'm kind of in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, nobody sees you as in the driver's seat, though. They see you as a floater and unreliable, and I think she uh, overestimated how much sway she really had. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's, let's be clear here. I don't know if she necessarily overestimated. Because, I mean, if it wasn't for the idol, Jessica would have gone home. However, we don't necessarily know how much of that would have actually been her doing. I mean, am I – you guys know what I'm trying to say, yeah. right? Like, she did in some weird way have control. She just went about it in one of the shittiest ways possible. Yeah. Okay, that's what you have. Don't go up and scream, I have control, everybody. Look at all of the control yeah. I have. <laughs> I am beasting out here. I have all the control. Come yeah. stop me. <laughs> guess what? Like, Someone come like, and stop you. And that's how the idle play was so easy to do to get rid of her and basically flip the balance of power once again. Because, I, I, you know, 
I feel ahead. like there could have been a scene where Lucy like pulled all eight of them together and was like, "Hey guys, I just want you to know, like, I'm in control here. Like, hope everyone's yeah. good. Like, this is my game. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah." And I think maybe Lucy was doing this kind of stuff, but Paul was even more obnoxious at it. So when Paul was gone, it was like, oh, my God. You know, well, look at this. Uh, you know, when it. one dictator falls, another rises. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. So Lucy's out of the way. She's in the sky with diamonds. There's one other person I really want to focus on with the uh, Gen X or, or millennials. Or Gen Xers, yeah. And that, of course, is the wonderful David Ty. David Wait, played- we're going to skip Jessica's stupidity? We're going to skip Jessica? Oh, I feel like we yeah. addressed her stability enough, but let's we can flesh it out more. Ty, let's let's talk about Jessica. I am disappointed because I really thought that she was going to do well. I had her in my, and I guess she could recover from all of this, yeah. but like she was basically what I considered the strategic hub of that tribe. I thought she had Sunday on lockdown. I thought she had Lucy on lockdown. I basically thought that she'd be able to regather the the man if that was what she wanted to do. And she showed none of it. She showed no instinct whatsoever. Like, I can see why she was blindsided by Lucy because it made no logical sense for Lucy yeah. to blindside her. So why would she logically assume that yeah. Lucy was doing it? Yeah. But, you know, she was a mess. She was an absolute mess and... That needs to be on record. Steven, and, your hags are messes. Oh, I mean, I mean she's an absolute mess. Oh, but hold on, Steven. I'm with Alex has him, so we're gonna jump to Alex. But I do want to say, to me, it is, uh, it's just kind of like almost frustrating because she was given such a good edit at the start, and now she seems to be faltering. <laughs> Alex, go ahead. Yeah. So, like, uh, just to talk about last last week's boot in relation to how it f factored into this week's boot. So. The the good side of uh, getting rid of Paul is that uh, you know because I think it was there was some calculus going on there where it's like if we get rid of CC then David will have an idol and Ken brings us food so are they really going to get rid of them before they get rid of rid of one of the girls? Mm -hmm. uh, but the downside is that by creating a precedent for strategic gameplay so early in the game and simultaneously uh, putting a target on your back as someone who does make the strategic moves, you have basically made yourself the next big target by way of making it okay for everybody to get rid of the strategic threat. Mm -hmm. so, you think, so you think she almost, in a way, did it to herself. But what I want to know is, why weren't we, and anyone can respond to this, why weren't we shown any scenes of Jessica trying to save herself? Do you think they exist, or do you think she was so confident that it wasn't her? Because... We, we were edited to believe that she was blindsided by all those votes. I wouldn't go so far as to say she was confident, but I think she really did have trust in the group of people she was with. And as Ty said, it made no logistical sense for Lucy and Co. to go after her. Um, because they were a solid group. Well, for Lucy and something, anyway. I mean, the point Yeah, Lucy, Lucy that's, I was about to say... Yeah, and that's the thing about, like, the guys, we're, we're giving them kind of a bad rap, but if I'm Chris or if I'm Brett, of course I'm voting out Jessica next. One, because they're not me, and two, they just take out my main guy. So, mm -hmm. all right. Jessica, we're putting her from top contender to who knows, but... I will say this, though, real quick. Okay, real I think quick. Well, Jessica you got to move on. Okay, real quick. I think Jessica okay. did have a pitfall. I don't think this is an absolute death knell for her. I think she's certainly down, very far down, but definitely not out of it yet. And the swap could potentially help her. Right. But Ty, uh, tonight we didn't hear it, see anything from Sunday or CC. Can I mark them off? Do you think I can? Yeah, probably. When are they going to go? Just I sometime? I don't know. That, that's some, it all depends on where they land. They could yeah. be early merge. They could be mid merge. Who knows? I feel like right. CC is involved in David's edit, and Sunday might yeah. still be involved in Jessica's. But they are subsidiary characters at this point. Yeah. Case so, in point, we have not heard in the episode once about Sunday's cancer thing after that was a big pre-game. Oh yeah, I forgot about mentioned. that. That's a very, yeah, very good point. Precisely because she's not. Yeah, a super not, character. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so okay. all that out of the way, we got one more person to talk about, and that's going to be David. All right. Hindsight's twenty twenty, and with the swap coming up, him playing the idol, it does secure Jessica and Ken, and in a way, CC. But it well, also, CC was with him, and then it also alienates Sunday, Chris, and Brett. So he's basically trading three for free. Three for free. Was that the logical, smart move to do? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so we got two yeses, and then I'll show you this from Alex. Ty, I'm going to let you explain. I'm going to go down the line because I'm actually iffy on Chris this one. Chris and Brett and Sunday gave no shits about David. Yeah. That wasn't really going to change one way or the other. Yeah. Now Jessica absolutely positively owes her game to David. Ken already loves David, and Cece already loves David. So you've got three people heading into a swap and probably end up with you who absolutely love you, and three other people who feel the same about you that they did before, that you were a bumbling idiot. And basically, nothing has changed for him with those other three people, except for the fact that those other three people, until they find out they're swapping, need to kiss his ass. And that is the, that's the goal. That is the goal, to keep yourself safe, to keep himself safe, and he has people super loyal to him now. I thought it was, you know, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have the balls give up my idol before swap but i think his use of it makes sense in the context of what's going on plus they also don't know that they're swapping so now yeah, he has and, a and, and i think that's the biggest reason why i'm leaning more towards it was a good move because if you don't think you're swapping because the swap should have happened earlier all right oh, no, you have the numbers sorry. well you know what i mean steven go ahead and yeah. so do you agree with ty just what oh. what difference your point to ty no, I'm, I completely agree. I think it made yeah. sense because you have the three people, Sunday, Chris, Brett, who I wouldn't say disliked David, but they had no real reason to keep him. Ken and Cece were already on his mm -hmm. side, so if you have this chance to secure Jessica and axe Lucy and get a 4-3 majority and a try to mm -hmm. 7 at uh, you know final 16, why not take it? I mean, that, that is worth something. All right, and then Alex, if you have anything else to add, you can go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to lean more towards you guys' opinion than I was initially after the episode edit ended because I just remembered what if they do swap at 14 like in Karamoan? Yeah. At that point, there's two other whole other tribal councils, and you yeah. might as well secure a majority now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah. real quick, another option could also be if they wanted to divide into three tribes at 15. Yeah, and so, but either way, though, I do guys hear you saying that because he, if you if you're David and you've written off Sunday, Chris, and Brett, might as well keep Jessica. The only thing I'm worried about though is I don't see any reason why Jessica. You know, I think she would write David's name down if you know on a swap. I think if that was the easy vote, I, I think, I think she would she goes all to all kill all him. She's dead. You think so? Well, they're because they're swapping. I feel like. I feel like if she does that, she's going to be Anna from last season, where she was yeah. way too eager to flip her on her own people, yeah. and she gets stomped down for it. Well, and not just that, but I think um, if it's a situation where it's, say, Jessica, David, two of Sunday, Brett, Chris, mm. Jessica, I mean, I'd like to think, would not go back to the people. Well, that's things I don't think she would go back to them, but I think Jessica, oh, and actually, Ty, you hit the nail on your head of the Anna thing. I could see the millennials with David and Jessica – and Jessica being like, oh, I want to get off David. But, of course, David already has the millennial ties, and that's what, you know, saves. I'm just saying, while I do understand the move logically from David, I just don't necessarily see super loyalty from Jessica, if that makes sense. Not necessarily, but she's certainly more loyal to him than she is to Sunday, who knifed her, or the boys, who yeah. don't yeah. like her, clearly. Very so. fair. All right. So we've done that, and the last thing I actually want to talk about, and Steven, I'm going to you for this because you're a giant survivor nerd, and then we might hop over to Alex. Tonight they talked a lot about these live tribal councils where things change at tribal council. Is that as rare as Probes is acting like, and is it more, actually more frequent in the most recent seasons? Um, I, I think David used live tribal council more to set the stage and the dynamic of what was going on. I don't think it was so much a live tribal in the sense of like, Everything's changing at Tribal. And that's true because the votes fell how you'd kind of, besides maybe Ken's vote for Jessica, the votes kind of fell how you thought, thought they yeah, were. Yeah, so, and I mean, I, I think the only argument, like, I'll say this. I can't recall a time recently, and maybe this is just my memory being screwy, where a vote has legitimately changed at Tribal Council, mm -hmm. where someone has been like, I am switching my vote as, you know, tribal council. Well, I mean, I mean, Hannah's vote for Amari mm -hmm. happened. But, but, but the, 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 the outcome, yeah, but the outcome, I see what you're saying. Right. Hey, can we think of recent examples, Alex? Do you, can you throw one where the actual... I'm, I'm trying to think. Because I know there was one, I feel like there was one last season that was pretty much really driven home, like, oh my God, they weren't going to go home. Oh my God. I, I think it might have had one, Peter and Julia, because um, Aubrey wrote down uh, Julia's name initially and crossed it out. Oh, you, yeah, okay. I think that's about the most recent thing I can think of, though. Mm. So it is, Jeff, just hyping up kind of like in Survivor. Um, what was it? 
uh, what was the camp second chances where they were like, oh, it's not alliances, it's whatever the stupid term. They voting get blocks. Yeah, voting blocks that are shifting, and it's yeah. like voting blocks have literally always fucking existed. Yeah. Uh, well, past season one, I guess. An argument can be made that happened in season one too. All right. So with all that being said, this is when we would normally speculate about what's going to happen next episode. We don't know. We viewers, listeners, we don't fucking know. It's a giant question mark. We haven't read spoilers, so I guess if anyone has any final thoughts, now would be the time to say them before we wrap things up for tonight. Michaela is a legend. Yeah. Michaela is a. Okay, Michaela is a legend. That's fair. For a second, I thought you were talking about South Pacific, Michaela, and I was really confused. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I haven't even seen that season, but I. He is the greatest player of all time. All right. <laughs> I want to thank Alex. I want to thank Steven. I want to thank Tyler. I want to thank everyone for watching so much. It's been fantastic. And be sure to check with us next week. It's just going to be more of us. There might be a few special guests. Who knows? Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.